Hello, everyone, and welcome to Action RPG. I'm your host, Aaron, and it's Saturday, so you know what that means. It's time for our weekly news roundup for week 46. Three pretty big titles dropped this week and a whole bunch of other information. All right, let's jump right into this. Our first story takes us to the world of Minecraft Dungeons with a feature that I thought this game should have had when it initially dropped. Check this out. On their official, tw official Twitter, they put out, Heroes, are you listening? Cross-platform play arrives on November 17th for Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, Windows, and Xbox One. It's almost time to join forces whatever platform you play on. So anybody out there that plays this game, there is, this is big news. I consider Minecraft Dungeons the family-friendly action RPG, and it's actually the game is fairly more deep than you would expect, but like, you know, I've got younger children. If I was going to get them in front of a PC playing a game to try and turn them into a future me, which is a scary thought, I would get them on Minecraft Dungeons. Right now on Metacritic, this game is sitting at a 72 with a user score of a 7.1. So it getting right now a solid C average. The Looter Slasher Godfall has officially dropped. Now, if you haven't heard of a Looter Slasher, this is basically a third person action RPG, and it is a very, very, very pretty game. But is there any substance behind all of those visuals? What does the experience feel like? Well, let's take a look at what Metacritic currently has for its critics and user scores. And click. Yikes. Metacritic is currently giving Godfall a 64, so it's a solid D. But the user review is what I care about a lot on this game. Of the 35 current ratings, it's getting a 5.1 or an F. And normally when I look at a game that just dropped, I like actually reading the user comments. And I will start with the bottom and then the top. So the negative comment that is currently getting a 0 out of 10. I'm usually pretty content with most hack and slash or looter intensive games, but Godfall, while satisfying both categories, is a disgrace. The controls are horrendous and transform play is pure torture. The minimal amount of underlying story, voice acting and cinematics makes the title feel like a high school project. Not good. Positive comment, though. 10 out of 10. Fantastic game, so much fun with a friend, combat is great, has some problems for sure, definitely worth getting, but if you are not a fan of looter genre, wait for a sale, reviews below 5 are just a joke, don't take it seriously, I'm sure this game will be a 80 or 85% positive when it comes to Steam. Anybody out there playing Godfall? What do you think? AMD is continuing to dominate the CPU market with their new 5000 series processors. AMD and retailers talk Ryzen 5000 shortage, a lot more stock coming soon. Now, what AMD said is that this drop is not going to be a paper launch. Now, if you never heard the term paper launch before, that basically means that the item is available to the public, but you can't really get one. They're sold out in seconds. You can't actually go to a store and buy one. You can't go online and order one. People go and purchase them, and then you got scalpers reselling them. It's basically the debacle that happened with the NVIDIA 3000 series GPUs, where you technically still right now cannot order them. Now, what AMD is claiming is that this was not a paper launch, and they were planning for a high demand for the item. They just didn't know how high that demand would be. They sold out almost instantly, and they were planning for it. So when we scroll down here, currently Mind Factory, which is a place that reviews and sells CPUs, is saying the best CPU launch ever, ever, ever. They had hundreds of thousands of units and they were still sold out on the first day because that is how many people wanted these new five thousand series CPUs. Now, in this article, I'm not going to read it, but AMD is claiming to ensure that they are going to have a stock for the Q4 for the holiday season. Just be patient. They will be back in stock soon. We're just going to have to wait and see. When you look at Newegg right now, all four of their processors, their new 5000s are all sold out. So, I mean, that was kind of expected, but again, just not as fast. And then AMD did record their highest market share quarter ever at 22.4 percent and really that was before 
the 5000 series processors hit the shelf. So we're going to see how much more of the pie they are going to start taking from Intel. The highly anticipated Assassin's Creed Valhalla is now available across all platforms. PlayStation 4, 5, Xbox One, Xbox X, S, Stadia, and PC. Now this game dropped the same week as Godfall, so the idea was what game are people going to gravitate to? Now most people were saying Assassin's Creed because obviously this game has kind of a cult following with it, but it was kind of getting some mixed reviews with some stuff that was going on, so we didn't know how well it was going to do. Well, the reviews are currently in. Let's take a look at Metacritic. Right now, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and I always rate it on PC, is getting an 84, so a solid B, and that is a great score. Now, the user score drops a little bit. Now you're into the C range at a 7.8, and it does currently have 416 ratings. So let's just read a couple of those comments, starting with the negative. I'm so confused by these reviews. I have run into countless bugs with side quests, locked scenarios based on confusing storyline progression mechanics, and pathing slash rendering that hurts the eyes. It's obvious the devs double down on environment design yet again with more expanded focus on character narrative, which I like, but this game is plagued with bugs and dated mechanics. Origin is great, Odyssey is super, Valhalla is a national hodgepodge from previous games, no thanks. Okay, let's read a good review. Not only one of the best games of 2020, it's one of the best Assassin's Creed games. Better than the last two. Thankfully, it's already sold extremely well. Almost double the amount that Odyssey did, so despite some bitter YouTubers who are trying to do absolutely everything to cancel this game, it's doing very well. Now, I did read this comment before making this video, so I had to do a little research to see if that was valid, and it was. So, Assassin's Creed Valhalla doubles launch player count compared to Odyssey, and it's about twice as much. Now again, this game, they put a lot more marketing into it. They have spent more money to create the game and to market the game, but on its launch day, it had almost double the player count. Are you playing Assassin's Creed Valhalla? What do you think? The highly anticipated A3 Still Alive dropped on iOS and Android this week. Now, this game is an open world RPG that has PvP and PvE elements. The company that made it is Netmarble. Now, if you know anything about Netmarble, they are the company that made Lineage 2 Revolution, which I played a whole heck of a lot of. And this game is a, I don't want to say carbon copy of that game. It does feel kind of the same, but it's more modern. There's more stuff you can do, but you still got world bosses. You still have auto run, auto fight, auto quest. There's lots of things that carry the exact same characteristics as Lineage 2, but I mean, I'm playing the game right now, and it is one of those time-wasting, fun, weirdly addictive games, but to be good, you do have to pony up the dough. A3 Still Alive features a variety of PvP and PvE engagements, including Conquest, Raid, Dark Presence, and World Boss content. At launch, the game will have five classes, including a Berserker, Templar, Wizard, Assassin, and Archer. So, let me quickly play for you the launch trailer for A3 Still Alive. Enjoy.
Yakuza Like a Dragon has officially dropped this week. Now, if you have not heard of this game, it's a JRPG. Yes, I said that right, a JRPG, which stands for Japanese Role Playing Game. Now, I made a video earlier in the week breaking down this entire game, so I will link that video at the end of this video if you want to check it out. But it has turn-based combat in kind of an interesting open world city feel. If you are looking for a new title that's different than anything you have previously played, this might be the game for you. Let's head over to Metacritic and take a look at what scores it's currently getting. Right now, the critic score is an 81, so it's a B minus, right? It stays in the green. And it's interesting is the user score is almost identical. It's getting an 8.0, which is still a B. Now check out the positive and negative comments for this, starting with the negative. The worst gameplay I've ever seen, although it has a good story, but I don't really like the gameplay. I prefer the old gameplay than this gameplay. Person used gameplay a lot in his comment. The positive comment. If you like turn-based RPG combat, this is your game. The phenomenal combat system plus a really good and interesting story and cool graphics makes this game a 10 out of 10 for me. The one person hates the combat and gameplay and the other person loves it. That's going to be up to you to decide. It appears we are finally getting close to an actual launch of Warhammer Odyssey. This is one of the first games I ever covered on my channel. And we still don't have the games in our hand, but check out this interview with MMORPG and their development team. Now, I'm going to link this article in the description below if you want to go through and read about it. It talks about raids. It talks about gear. They talk about development process. OK, but there's only one thing I'm going to touch on for this video, and it is at the end. Will there be an open beta? Our intent is to have a rolling soft launch that will serve as an open beta. This will start in specific territories and on specific platforms and gradually expand leading up to full launch. There will be more information coming in the coming days. Is the game still on track to release in 2020? Yes, absolutely. We currently anticipate all territories will have full access by January 2021. That is some big news in the Warhammer Odyssey realm. 2021 January. Now, if there's anybody out there planning on playing this game, Warhammer Odyssey, join my official Discord. We will be running a mercenary company, which is the equivalent of a guild or clan in other games. So you will be starting off with a close group of gamers that you know and that, can you, and that you can communicate with. The link for my Discord is in the description below. Closing out this video with the little Activision Blizzard news. Now, anyone that follows my channel knows that in these videos, when I can, I like to end them with some statistics. And this is a statistic which makes me feel sick. Activision Blizzard made 1.2 billion in microtransactions in the last quarter, more than half of the company's overall quarterly revenue. Video games are always big business, but especially in a year when most of the world's population is trying to stay at home as much as possible. Last week, Activision Blizzard revealed its financial results for the period between July and September, and, and it went better than expected. The company made over $1.95 billion in revenue, up from the $1.2 billion the same quarter. The biggest driver of that success was a staggering $1.2 in microtransactions, and that mainly came from Call of Duty Modern Warfare. When you talk about the ever-changing gaming arena, and you see all these games selling skins and cosmetics and pay to win and pay to progress, and all these little microtransactions that are now popping up in literally every single game not just hey this game is going to be free and it's going to be monetized by you buying stash tabs that's how we're going to make our money no a triple a 60 80 100 dollar game if you're getting the deluxe versions will also charge you 10 20 50 dollars for in-game items and why do they do it because people will pay they will the more we pony up the dough for these microtransactions, the more they will continue to put them in. 
And then you look at these other games like Genshin Impact, right? Like the gotcha system. It is a form of gambling and people get addicted and hooked to it. And Activision Blizzard is for sure cashing in on that addiction. All right, everyone, that's the video. What do you think of this weekly news roundup 46? Is there any major story that I missed? Let me know in the comment section below. If you have not joined the official Action RPG Discord, please do so. We are only a couple members away from 400. Great conversations every day. The idea is to create a gaming community that could jump from game to game together so you never start the server alone. Link for that Discord is in the description. Thank you all for watching. Stay home, stay safe. Do not forget to join the official Action RPG Discord. Aaron out.